Wow, I really would have expected this place to be a lot deader, Rampage said as we looked around Megamart. Didn't Sanguine and Vermilion smash this place while trying to draw Blackjack out? The Superstore had a lot more light, with a hole punched in the roof. Gun lay on its side beneath the hole, several layers and cables evident of trying to pull it upright. The vendors, however, were swamped with ponies buying and selling ammo, armor, and scrap metal, yelling and hawking their wares back and forth. Apparently, the slaughter of the past month hadn't done much to discourage ponies from shopping. Actually, we stopped by your stable first, then here. We figured we'd just hit everywhere you'd been till we found something you cared about. Psychoshy said as she floated above the crowd. Of course, the longer things took, the more pissy that griffin became, and the more desperate sanguine got. Desperation. Mother of atrocity, Rampage remarked. A herd of half a dozen robed zebra passed by silently. Two goats bleated counteroffers to a pony selling barrels of scrap metal. A posh society unicorn painstakingly accounted for every cap's worth of her produce, while her shabby servants made sure every pony was staying back. Vermilion and his boys took out the turrets and blew out the roof. Then they flew around and shot the place up for a few minutes, left and waited for you to come running. Boo was nearly grafted to my side. Clearly, crowds and her were not a good mix. I had put another bag over her head and tied the straps to my barding. I may have gotten a few odd looks, but other ponies had more pressing issues. Really, I'm astonished they let you in here. Then a mottled green mare launched herself out of the crowd to tackle Psychoshy. The Pegasus nimbly flipped backwards in the air, but the green mare clung to her tenaciously. Murderer! bellowed Keystone. The shoppers in our immediate area backed away, but immediately there were bets being placed. Fifty caps on Psycho, Rampage said, and then nudged me. Hey, Blackjack, spot me fifty bottle caps. I didn't respond as I watched Psycho flip upside down and somehow slam the other mare into the ground with a crash. Keystone didn't let go, though, and they rolled back and forth. The yellow Pegasus smashed her the back of her head repeatedly into the Earth Pony's face. Keystone bit on Psychoshy's ear, drawing blood as the Reaper thrashed. I was sure that, any second, Psychoshy's ear was going to tear off completely. Enough! yelled a familiar voice, and the crowd parted to admit Bottle Cap. The mare had swapped her store uniform for blue combat armor. Her battle saddle had two automatic shotguns. Suddenly, the fight was a lot less interesting for ponies downrange. More security ponies came out of the woodwork. Still, the pair continued to struggle. So Bottle Cap shot them. I very nearly had duty and sacrifice out before I had three sets of guns on me. I froze, partly out of survival instinct and partly because the rapid-fire barking hadn't reduced the pair to buddy sludge. Instead, the two parted, shielding their bodies as well as they could. Small cloth beanbags lay scattered around them as they yelped and curled up. I returned the revolvers to my holsters. What's the big idea? Psychoshy bawled as she pointed at the limping green mare rising to her hooves. Even in combat armor, I bet those bags still had a sting. She assaults me and now you shoot me? I thought this was a place of business, she said as she pulled herself to her hooves. Remember when you attacked us? We do. Bottle Cap replied. You and that goal you were with? I lost three good employees and one hell of a piece of equipment when you attacked. Why shouldn't I switch to Drafnil? She was a mercenary, I blurted, drawing a surprised look from the yellow mare. Sanguine hired her. She's got caps to spend. I gave a slack smile. Business? Trade to save the wasteland? All that? Clearly, both were stunned at my defense of Psychoshy. Bottle Cap recovered first. Blackjack. Glory was able to save you after all. She stared into my eyes for a moment, then shivered and looked away. Her gaze returned to the yellow Pegasus. Are you saying she's with you? It's something like that, I said quickly. She was just working for Sanguine. It's something Reapers do. You wouldn't hold that against her. 
Not when she has caps to trade. Bottlecap pressed her lips together as she glared at the Pegasus. Fine. She can stay and pay like every pony else. But, you mean I got to pay? Psychoshai scoffed. Reapers don't pay. The sudden cocking of several automatic shotguns gave a pretty convincing counter-argument. Bottlecap smirked with evident satisfaction. Yeah, you do. New times. I can't count on Big Daddy to keep trouble in line. So now you get to pay the same as every pony else. Don't like it? Leave. Bottlecap replied sharply. I smiled, shaking my head and receiving a sharp look. Something funny? Here. I pay my bills. I replied, lifting my hooves. Just had a talk about the morality of thug economics on our way here. That's all. I relaxed, as did she, a bit at that, and even smiled. Well, there goes the neighborhood, Rampage sighed. Steel Ranger toys getting blown up, Reapers actually having to pay? What's next? Enclave actually doing something productive? Alicorns with personality? Sunny days? What's the world coming to? These are interesting times, Bottlecap said as she looked around. Never seen business like this, though. You'd think the attack would have put ponies off. But we've got more folks coming in all the time. Those harbingers are swapping loads of fresh armaments with old food stores for information and followers. And yesterday we got a boat from Zanzibra landing at the boardwalk. Harbingers, I said with a frown. Oh yeah, you've seen them around. Green banners with black towers. Hoofington rises. They say that soon the city is going to open up and start a new age. They found so much stuff that folks are saying there's got to be something to it. She looked at Psycho Shy and Keystone. Let her shop. If she starts anything, turn her new pincushion. The mottled green mare nodded once. Bottle Cap looked at Rampage. Am I going to have to worry about you too? I'm just shopping. I was thinking of picking up a few value packs of mintals and medics. Is there a sale going on? She asked with a smile. Bottle Cap looked at her a little bit longer, then nodded her head in the direction of the clinic. The young reaper saluted and trotted away with an angry, confused psycho shy. Bottle Cap looked at Boo, Boo quizzically, but then shook her head and gestured for me to move to the side towards her office. Once we were out of the noise, I took the bag off and she blinked and shook her head. Do I want to know? Bottlecap asked as Boo started to explore the office. Probably not, I replied. You know that cult is looking for you, right? The yellow mare said as she looked at me in concern. Yep, it's Deus and the bounty hunters all over again, I replied with a sigh. I watched Boo wander into the office bathroom. Good, she was finally figuring out where to do her business. Bottlecap looked nervous. Glancing over her shoulder. It's a lot worse than that. Deus's bounty hunters were generally poor and poorly armed. The biggest threat to you was Deus himself. These cultists, though, they're coming up with the ordinance I've rarely seen before. Anti-machine rifles and Mox Pony carbines that are brand new, out of the crate quality. They're all wearing equestrian army combat armor, and they've got ample food stores. But they're just... desperate ponies. Right? I asked with a nervous glance at the door. For now. But the more powerful they become, the better the quality of the fighters, and the bigger a threat they are. It's hard to pass up free food and protection. They're even giving it away for information on you. Bottlecap sighed. They haven't actually gotten smart enough to verify the info. Yet. I mean, everybody knows they'll turn over ridiculous amounts of goods for a rumor you're out east or west or somewhere between. Bottlecap said before she chewed on her lip. Or else they've got so much they can just throw it all away for the smallest rumor. Yick. I sure didn't like that possibility. How many? Do they have a leader? Dozens, at least. They're probably following some pony called the Prophet. No clue who that actually is. They've all broken up into cells. They're absorbing a lot of the newcomers to the city, but there's a massive creepy vibe to them. 
Most of them give food and care, but others are really well armed and looking for you. They call them some seekers. They want your pip buck big time. Doesn't matter. It doesn't work without a ministry marriage descendant. But I frowned. They weren't looking for one of these, so... Did that mean that they already had some pony related to the Ministry Mares? Bottlecap shrugged. Whatever. They want your pit buck really bad. I'm glad you ditched it somewhere, she said as she looked at my hoof. I decided not to inform her that Glory had it rewired inside my leg. So is me being here going to be a problem? I asked nervously. No. The finders are absorbing a lot of these new ponies too. And while we may not be as good as these cultists are at finding treasures, we are making quite a haul the last few weeks. Found some kind of bunker facility up north. Should be loaded up with goodies. She said as she rubbed her hooves together in glee. Bottle calf, that's my stable! I cried, wiping the glee off her face. I mean, really. Did she honestly plan to loot my home? That was just... Besides, it's... Filled tight with poisonous gas and raider plague, and soon steel rangers too, as well. Oh, I... Ah. Huh. Shoved the back of her neck awkwardly. Well, I guess I'll tell Digger's crew to move on to pick over the bunkers the rangers left behind at Iron Mare. Funny, he didn't say it looked like a stable, but... Eh, I guess one bucker looks like another to a professional scavenger. She coughed and then sighed. Look, Blackjack, could I ask you a favor? I arched a brow. Sure. Asking is always free. The finders really need Paradise Mall back, she said as she looked at the city map on the wall. A big red circle had been drawn to the east side. You've got the Eggheads, Scrapyard, Rocket Town... Meet Locker, and now we have the Enclave out east. And we have zero presence there since Ulsri lost them all to Red Eye's forces. Most of his troops are going back to the Everfree region, but there are some still holding onto the mall, and Keeper really wants them beaten back. They're being commanded by a griffin named Vermilion. I've met him, I said absently, looking at the map as I rubbed my right temple. My head was running slit. Slipshot through memories of that night. My meetings with Ulsri and where I needed to go next. Well, I'll think about it. I have no problem helping the finders so long as you ban that whole slavery thing. My eyes danced over the east side of the map, drawing more and more to one section. Why was it so hard to focus? My eyes finally locked on a green X north of Paradise, marked meat locker. It was drawn over a square labeled Hoofington General Hospital, and just north of there, Hightower Jail. What do you know about this place? Hightower? Used to be a prison before the bombs fell. Don't let the name fool you, it's not a little jail, but a serious high-security prison. Today, it's like a huge feral ghoul nest. A balefire missile fell on it, but malfunctioned. Instead of leveling the pace, it just irradiated it. Or heck, maybe that's what it was supposed to do. All the prisoners died slow. Most of the same ghouls set up shop to the south in Meat Locker, the old city hospital before the Fluttershy Clinic was built in the reconstruction. You get a few ghouls that try to salvage there, but... He shrugged. Probably don't last too long, I replied. Well, I just... Have to get flown on top, and then I'll be on my way. There's got to be a way in from above, right? I said with a grin. She didn't share it. I groaned, folded my legs on the desk, and buried my face in them. What? What is it? Mutant cyber attack dogs? Ghoul? Ninja guards? Spectral gangsters? 